This is recording? Oh, okay. okay, that's recording. We got the YouTube recording, and now we are going to get the podcast recording, so I'm going to do a little intro. <gasps> Let's go. 2021. Let's go. We're just going to try this out. Let's set our intentions. Three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome to the Flex Around the World podcast. I'm doing this as a trial with my best friend, Brittany. That's me. We are just doing this on New Year's Eve because we're bored and we want to see if maybe this is going to be something that we're going to pursue in the new year. As you know, I am no longer flexing around the world with Emirates, but flex around the world can still exist in terms of stories, in terms of mindset. He's flexing around the world with me, with his body, his soul, his mind, his spirit, everything. So here we go. We're going to start off this podcast with, since it's New Year's Eve, one of my worst New Year's Eve stories. Let's go. Let's go. So I think everyone has a horrible New Year's Eve story. And I didn't tell you mine from earlier, but literally everyone has like one New Year's Eve that was the worst. Okay. Well, tell me yours because now I want to know. Oh my God. No, I don't even well, want to go there. Okay. First. Okay. Let's start off. So hi, uh, podcast listeners. So if you're following me, you've probably seen my stories and posts with Emirates. And essentially I wanted to do this podcast just to kind of give a, a little bit of background to why I joined Emirates because a lot of these stories came from before I was flying with Emirates, which is a whole nother journey and a whole nother story and maybe a book, it will come out, you'll see. But I basically turned 25 and ran away from my life. And that's how I pursued and found traveling. And it really changed my life. But before that, and kind of going into that, a lot of things happened to me in Los Angeles, one of which was breaking up with an ex of mine and kind of going on this whole like self-help Ugh. journey. We've all been there. We've all been there. Please message in if you've been there <laughs> and let us know about it because we've all been like, okay, this new year, I'm not talking to my ex. Even if it's like this next week, I'm not talking to my ex. So I know you have a good story, but I know that all of you have good stories too, so please tell us them because we get entertained very easily. Yeah, tell us your stories, leave stories. us them in the comments. But I'm gonna give a little bit of background just because this is our first trial podcast and it is New Year's Eve, so I'm gonna do my worst New Year's Eve story. But as a little bit of background, this I have to talk about, I don't even know where to start with this one. Okay, so let, okay, say the key points of this story. Okay. First of New all, New Year's Eve. That's all I got. Yeah, it's New Year's Eve. Okay, so <laughs> how do we start this? So we're both in our thirties. Let's. Yeah, okay, let's go we that. are. Okay, okay, so we're like, we ah, we're in our thirties. We don't really we're look hot. like we're in our thirties anymore, but uh, we still look like we're in our twenties. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So basically, all of my traveling started when I was twenty-five. But before that, I was in two very serious relationships, and one was actually with someone that I still to this day wish was my best friend. And I don't know if a lot of people feel that way, yeah. but just a little bit of background. We got Janelle saying something. I thought we were ignoring. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna ignore this. We're gonna ignore this because <laughs> we're on the podcast. Because you're gonna make us edit too much. So. Janelle, we love it. We can't respond to this because now we have but to we love it. podcast. We're focusing on this microphone. This is our microphone, by the way. Okay, a little bit of background. I dated somebody in Los Angeles uh, that was very much my equal. He was my best friend, same age. We met on Grindr, and it was just a hookup. That's all great love stories start. That's all great love stories start. And actually... Uh, before all of you heterosexuals get into this, like we started this trend of finding people okay. from apps. I'm okay. sorry. And everyone I mean, was like, what are you doing? And we're like meeting people. I and will say that's true because I remember you telling me about this. You're like, oh, I'm on an app and you can find people and blah, blah. I did not put the two and two together for a very long time. Yeah. Like most of society, like 10 years later, they're like, oh, but I will Tinder. say, yeah. I don't know. I think it's two different worlds. <laughs> it is two different worlds. Grindr, I mean, Grindr and, Tinder. and Tinder, completely different. Uh, but we but started the, the, the foray into meeting people offline. Right. O- online. Online offline. and then offline. offline. From online to offline. And together. Yeah. <laughs> and coming together. Yes. So, yeah. So we met for a hookup. We did hook up and we ended up liking each other. So, of course, we started dating. And um, he really was my best friend. We dated for t- two years. 
This is just a little background story. So I feel like you need to add okay. a key point to this backup story. What is my key point? Well, you said it's a New Year's Eve story, but you didn't say one major aspect. Oh. Who's involved in okay, this story? Okay, the people involved in this story is um, Britney Spears, like not really, but kind of, kind and of. all of her background dancers, pretty much. I so, feel like that just needs to be said, yeah, because okay. that's kind of a key like situation. <laughs> okay, so wait, yeah, so we're going to redo this for the <laughs> podcast. Uh, this story is about my worst New Year's Eve, and my worst New Year's Eve's in... Uh, <laughs> my worst New Year's Eve involved Britney Spears and her backup dancers... Las Vegas and my ex boyfriend. Crazy ex boyfriend. Let's say that. Crazy. Let's get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah. let's get into the story. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of background about my ex boyfriend. He was um, somebody that I dated for two years. I have no hard feelings against him, except for the fact that I think he's a dick after everything he's done. But in terms of our relationship, nothing bad happened. Okay. We dated from twenty three to about twenty five. I broke up with him. Apparently, I broke his heart. So this is the, the story. We dated those two years. It was great. He was ready to move in together, start a life. We were in Los Angeles. We were both very similar, pursuing acting. He worked at Starbucks. I worked at Starbucks. We both loved Britney Spears. Like, we just had a lot going for us, and we really were best friends, and I think that's very rare to find. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think that's a key concept to a relationship, so I could see how you would delve deep into that yeah and that's one thing i will say to this day if he listens or whatever i do miss him he was my best friend and even after breaking up i still wish he would be my best friend but as things go it didn't work out uh i was turning 25 and i wanted to leave los angeles i was sick of pursuing acting i had just gradu graduated college um there was a lot of things going on in my life that couldn't be saved for another podcast, but essentially I wanted to leave LA and travel. I wanted to go to Europe. I wanted to do something crazy. I wanted to basically just start my life new. And I told him this um, in advance, like when I was 24. I was kind of having like a pre-quarter life crisis. Okay. I was like, I feel it coming. Okay. It's going to come when I turn 25 and I feel like this is what's going to happen. He fought it very much and yeah. i said basically been like there. i'm gonna leave so. oh totally been there <laughs> totally been there where you're like hear from someone that no this isn't what i want and you're just like okay yeah right but i can change his mind because i'm me and i'm sure that he was going through the same thing he was like oh yeah no i can go through, i i can change him like but that's the thing it's like it's, it doesn't have anything to do with the other person it's just like this is for my own personal journey i want to leave LA. I want to explore Europe and I'm not going to do that waiting for someone to join you to, to either join me or to come back to. Cause I didn't even know if I was going to go back oh, to LA okay. at this point. Yeah. I literally like was like, I'm going to do this trip around Europe and see where it takes me. And that's exactly what happened. I, I took this trip around Europe. I broke up with him. I broke his heart. We had a huge <laughs> dramatic breakup, even though it shouldn't have been a dramatic breakup. Okay, but that's like, welcome to every ex I've ever dated who but, was like, I told you what I wanted. <laughs> but, and I'm still like, okay, but that's, you still broke my heart. You still did it. But it should not be a dramatic, I feel that. like a dramatic breakup is when you like cheat on them or like all this shit happens. Like this was just literally like, dude, I'm like leaving the city broken. that we live I in. I do get that. I do get that. And I feel for him at this point in the story. I feel, I okay. feel for him. I feel for, yeah, I feel for him as well. And I tried very hard to make it up for him, which we'll get to. Oh, so essentially I, <laughs> I went to Europe. I loved traveling. Uh, I got the traveler's bug. I moved back. I went back to Los Angeles and basically I said, I'm going to leave in a year. I saved up money. Um, I sold my car, sold everything. And I moved to Australia. And when I was in Australia, I had the time of my life. I was doing the work holiday visa. I don't know where to look. I'm like, here, here. Look at both, baby. <laughs> so many. Look at both. Drink we're, your champagne. We're drinking also, and we're trying to do like so many things right now just as a trial, so. And also part of our trial is trying a seltzer. Oh, sorry. Um, champagne. by the way, uh, thank you to, oh. uh, Corona oh. Seltzer for okay. sponsoring this yeah. podcast. Oh yeah. I probably should have said that. <laughs> Let's skip to our ad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, featuring, featuring champagne and Corona seltzers. 
Are you going to show the Corona Seltzer? Yeah, I am after I spill on myself. After you rub your thigh. <laughs> uh, here we go. So we are doing a little Corona Seltzer and splashing the top with uh, champagne. And it's so good. It's actually you good. Yeah. yeah. So do try it. It's our drink of the evening. Get that on. Slurp, slurp, slurp. <laughs> okay. Do you need the, you need to top off? Okay. I mean, I kind of. We're gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Just <sighs> do it. Mmm. It's like AS. Thank you. Yeah. Are we doing that now? <laughs> Are we in that world? I feel okay. Like it's like different. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Next podcast. All right. <laughs> so where do we leave off? Broke up with him. Left. Traveled. Came We're back to LA. Australia. Went to Australia. Okay, what's happening All in Australia? All right, this is where it's important. Okay. <sighs> okay, when I was in Australia, I was there for a year, work holiday visa. I have a really good friend, one of my other best friends, which Brittany knows from high school, named Emily. Her brother unfortunately killed himself. So we had, oh, so I'm skipping ahead. <laughs> I have not spoken to my ex since this point, but my ex is obviously very good friends with Emily, because he knew both of us. He hung out with us. We were really good friends. So um, we hadn't spoken, but when Emily's brother killed himself, I reached out to him. I said, hey, just FYI, um, Emily's brother killed himself. If you want to reach out to her, give her your condolences, whatever. That kind of started a dialogue dark. between us. <laughs> it did get dark, but that's the circumstance. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it really, that's yeah. literally the only reason why I ever spoke to him. I had no desire to speak to him. He had no desire to speak to me. I had reached out to him before I went to Australia and I said, Hey, I'm leaving the country as I predicted when I broke up with you. Mm -hmm. Didn't say that, but that was in my mind. Uh, and so if you want to get coffee or whatever, he was like, no, this chapter is done. Bye. I was like, okay, fair enough. I respect that. I went to Australia, did my thing. Then this happened. It was really sad. I went to go visit Emily. So I just wanted him to know because he was really close with my friends. So that's what started the dialogue between us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then we were kind of chatting the whole year, like just friendly, but yeah. I mean, just social media. Right, right, right. So... Okay. I was it traveling. Leads to trouble. That, Everyone should know that. I don't think it leads to trouble, though. It, I think you should be able to be friends with your exes. Okay, I am friends with some of my exes, but also I do know that if you hurt somebody and then you're reaching out on a friendly note, it's still like they're still there's gonna but be. But this was two hours later. What do you mean, two hours? You should get your phone chargers in now. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be long. This podcast is like gonna be an hour. It is. Um, you don't have to watch the whole thing, but you better. <laughs> well, this is just for fun. Now I gotta edit this out. Thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just under I understand his side. I'm still feeling like. I mean, I think you need, you have good intentions, but your intentions are also like, oh, cool, we can be friends. I can fuck whoever I want. And he's like, oh, cool, we're friends. So he's he's definitely into me again. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is where the problems start because who thinks like that? I gave him a They're really good voice. fucked boy. up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. Uh, okay, long story short, I went home to visit her. I reached out to him. We were in touch, blah, blah, blah. At the time... Before I had gone to Australia, I was traveling with a friend of mine from Canada through Thailand. And Thailand is actually the reason I ended up in Australia because I had left LA. I was backpacking for like two months uh, with another best friend of mine. And uh, she had to go home <laughs> early because she ran out of money. Uh, so oh. I, I kept traveling and... I traveled with this girl. We went to Thailand for a month and she's a diehard Britney fan. Like, I mean, I'm a diehard Britney fan, of course. I'm just gonna say my age, I'm 33. And my very first album was Britney Spears. So I feel like, you know, we were brainwashed at that point. Like, Is you she... will always love Britney, like from the very first CD. A gay dude. Cause I love Britney, but I don't, I'm not a diehard. No, she's just a girl. She's like oh. diehard. Cute. I love it. This is well, this was also back in like whatever 2000 when she was still kind of hot. I mean now Britney's kind of like a 
homage to the past. Yeah, true. The kids today don't know. Like, yeah. the let's first of all give Britney Spears the respect she deserves. Can we do that? For Are like, we going to turn it to say Britney? I, well, we should say Britney in 2021, <laughs> but that's a whole nother issue that I'm not even going to get involved podcast. with. But uh, we need to give Britney the homage she deserves for pop music. She really changed the face. I mean, remember when she stripped to the VMAs and that nude body sequined outfit was the most scandalous thing like ever was that before or after janet released her boob on super Bowl? way before 2000 it was okay, like 2000 just make sure. janet and her yeah, boob yeah, would have been scandy. uh that like was 2005 a huge scandy no way before like britney spears ripping off a suit and getting in a nude body so we can outfit to sing oops i did it again at the vmas was, was like hot. the most scandalous thing in all of history and also that music video not oops i did it what was it Hit me, baby. One, like her first hit, yeah. was like okay, scandal. So, which is funny now because now you see like Ariana Grande, all these girls, like it's it. so sexualized, and it's like that's nothing. I mean, but Britney like pioneered the way, empowering. and yeah. she also pioneered the way for a lot of pop music. Yeah. Okay. Are we getting off base? Okay. Here? Yeah, we're getting off base. Well, yeah. she's involved. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what was the point she of is. that? I don't know, but you're supposed to know. You got to keep it on point. Go, Brittany. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> free so Brittany. Anyway, uh, he reached out. Okay, you guys are talking. You guys are friends. Oh no! So I was traveling with this girlfriend of mine that was a Britney Spears fan. Okay, and yes, this yes, was yes, yes, right yes. before Britney announced, or right when Britney announced she was gonna go to Vegas. Okay, that's why it's important. Okay, she was like, "I'm gonna do this Vegas show," and everyone's like, "What Vegas? Like, no Huge way!" Huge. Also, give. Huge give Britney credit oh, for going to Vegas because now everyone's going to Vegas and she was the first young pop star to go to Vegas and make it relevant. Just FYI. Side note, mental health moment for us all. <laughs> Britney thought of this first. She really did though. No, literally, okay. no, really. That's something I will not even like okay. joke about. There was people well, in Vegas before we're topping up the champagne. There's no reason to drink the whole bottle <laughs> because I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Just basically <laughs> angry. She didn't fill me up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she's a diehard fan. So she's the first Las pop Vegas. star to go to Vegas. Okay. okay. So she's like, we got to get tickets. And I was like, I don't really care. But if you want tickets, I'll buy them. Because she had never seen Britney. I have seen every Britney concert ever because I'm a diehard fan. But I don't. I, I didn't know that about you. Yeah, everyone. Okay, well, good. maybe not I'm like one more time, but okay. Everyone since then. Okay. Cool. Uh, but I'm a diehard fan, but also post uh, womanizer, she's not the greatest, so I don't really care to see her in concert because she's not that great. Anyway, but I would go for of uh, nostalgia. Okay. And but she really wanted to go, so we bought tickets. We buy tickets. Okay, so this was like in the summer. We buy tickets, and then the concert starts. I think in like. January or some or no, it must have started that December. Yeah, because we went for New Year's Eve. Long story short, my friend and I, this girl, were supposed to go. She lost her job. She was like, I can't go, but I will pay for this ticket. Just bring someone that wants to go. I was like, cool, fair enough. So it's New Year's Eve, like literally New Year's Eve. The, the day the, of. The, no, no, no. The the concert is on New Year's Eve. Okay, got it. So it's like a month before that she tells me like, oh, I lost my job. I'm sorry, I can't go. So I'm like, okay, um, let me just reach out to all my friends in LA because obviously someone is gonna want to go to okay. Britney Spears on New Year's Eve. And one of your friends for free. A best friend, X. I'm assuming. Well, he's not my best friend. But he <laughs> he is my ex. Okay. But before I reached out to him, I reached out to all my friends. I said, hey guys, it's New Year's Eve. Literally. Who wants a free ticket? It's a free ticket. Yeah. To Britney Spears. All we had to do was <laughs> was pay for the hotel room. And everyone's like, I don't want to pay. It's going to be expensive. It's Vegas on New Year's Eve. And I'm like... 20-year-olds. Yeah, but everything is going to be expensive or on New Year's Eve. How old were you at this point? 24, 25, 26? 27? I would have been... Um, it was the year that I left Australia. Because all of this happened during Australia. So I was 27. Oh. Mm. I mean, come on. Yeah. Late 20s, you should be able to pay for a hotel room somewhere yeah. cool on... Get it together. Eve. I mean, let's be honest. Get it together. And it's really sad when all my friends from LA are saying, oh, it's going to be expensive. I'm like, dude, like to go to like your local bar on New Year's Eve is going to be just as expensive. Like yeah. all you need to do right now is pay for the hotel room. You have a free ticket to Britney Spears. Okay. I'm sorry. That's a big deal. 
Oh, and the other important part <laughs> of the story is I knew a couple of Britney Spears ba dancers. So... A couple of dancers. You dancers. Knew <laughs> I knew. <laughs> and... Let me just the, drink this out. <laughs> Britney Spears dancers, I don't know if you guys know this or not, they go by dancers. It's like a thing, <laughs> it's an inner circle thing you may not know, but it's real. No, So he knew... I'm okay. just drunk. Okay. Um, <laughs> he knew a couple of dancers. I knew a couple of Britney Spears dancers just from being in the industry and being around them. As we all do. And I knew one that um, had moved to LA and become a dancer and another one that was an Australian dancer. I want, I'm trying to, I want to be like honest with this story. Okay. So the Australian dancer, I didn't know, but I actually ironically met him when I was living in Australia. He okay. must've been like back on a vacation from rehearsals or something. Mm -hmm. We met, we exchanged Facebooks, whatever. He said, if you come see the show, let me know. So obviously, cause I had bought those tickets yeah. with my friends. I said, um, Hey, we're coming. So we bought like the cheapest tickets, you know? And he was like, cool, just let me know when you're here and I'll move you up to VIP, whatever. You can hang out with us after. So it was like set up to be the best New Year's Eve ever. Okay, I yeah, mean, true. We paid like probably literally like 70 bucks for these Britney Spears tickets for the back row. So he moved us up to VIP. He said we were going to get to hang out with him and everyone else after and go after party with them. Hell yeah. So this was like the best New Year's Eve ever. So that's why I was yeah. crushed when my friend said she wasn't going to make it. So I'm scrambling to find someone. Yeah. Long story short, I can't find anyone. Everyone's complaining about the price. I'm like, you're all fucking lame. So I'm thinking in my head, who would appreciate to go to Britney Spears okay. on New Year's Eve? That's fair. I was like, the only person at this point that I know is going to be my ex. Okay. And I was like, is it a good idea to reach out to him? Is it not? And I thought it was because at this point we were talking. I mean, I think it's good, but I also think that you walk a very fine line. Right. But at this point, we have been broken up for three years. I get that. He should, That's be, a he should long be time. well past moved on by now. Exactly. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. what I would think. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a really long time. Yeah, it was a yeah. Three years is yeah. a long time. Yeah. So I said, whatever. We're in touch. So I'm going to message him and just see what he says. Yeah. So I said, hey, uh, you know, because of this situation, I have a free ticket. If you want to come from LA to meet me. I think it would be a really cool way for us to reestablish our friendship because okay. after all these years and even to this day, I would still want to be friends with him. Right, right, right. I guess so I, I told him that, but I said, look, I want to be very crystal clear and I still have this in my messages. So if I have to prove receipts, I can. <laughs> I said, I want to be clear. We are not getting back together. We are not going to get drunk and hook up. There is none of this happening. And in fact, one of her dancers probably likes me because I don't see what other reason he would be inviting us from the very back mm -hmm. to the VIP section. Okay. So I was like, so this dancer probably wants to hook up with me. But if you're cool with that, we can go enjoy the show and we can party with them after. And he was like, yeah, man. I'm so cool with that. I think you're the one that has a problem with us. Like maybe you're stuck in the past. I was like, no, definitely not stuck in the past. I just want to be crystal clear. I feel that like a red happen. flag happened here. Yeah, that was probably the red flag. Yeah. And also the fact that I was now in, where was I? I had moved back from Australia. I was in Seattle and I think I had to non-rev on my aunt's flight attendant privileges mm. and he had to drive. And that year it was like crazy weather. Like the airports had shut down, LA was snowing. So oh it was God. like really dangerous, one for him to even drive to Vegas. And two, I almost didn't make, I think I tried like three different flights mm -hmm. and I didn't get on. I was mm -hmm. like, fuck, I'm not gonna make this flight. And I made it the very last, I think three flights in, I made it. Are you happy you made it or? No, it was a lot of stress. And yes, thank you for bringing that up, Brittany, because I would have rather yeah. just sold these tickets that I had yeah. for a premium price right. and avoided all of this drama. Right. But what happened? You, okay, so red flag, the flights are telling you probably not a great idea. The weather is not ideal. I still decide to go. Well, he's driving, so we kind hey. of we kind of have to go. So 
Um, yeah, so I eventually get there, and actually, we have a great time at the very beginning. We... <laughs> Sorry, I was just... Uh... <laughs> Don't worry about trying it. to plug in something. Keep going. This is our first time. I want to see the time that we're going on here. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. Who's still watching? Our us? one viewer is like, <laughs> oh, you want to know how long you're going? Too long. <laughs> we're gonna edit this. This is gonna yeah. be okay. Okay, yeah. so um, <laughs> we're gonna take a drink. What we're going to leave off. Right. Uh, I have no one to invite, so I reach out to him. I'm very crystal clear. No, they're, we're way past that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. okay, I'm okay, doing okay, okay. So, okay. Blah, blah. so he says it's cool. Okay. Okay, so what no, do you No, the inclement weather is where we're at. We're what? like traveling, you're traveling. Yeah, traveling was bad. No, but we both got there. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So we meet... In the hotel lobby, we're staying, I don't know, fucking one of those shitty-ass hotels in Vegas, probably like Excalibur or something. Uh, <laughs> you know Excalibur? Yeah, I yeah, do. Like I loved probably, it as a child. But we... we as lived, a child. When we met, it was like everything that I had expected. Like, I was so excited. I'm waving to our new viewer. Is this your friend or my friend? No, I don't know who it is. Snuggle Bear TX. Hi. Okay, hello. We're not focusing on that long. Okay, sorry. This is the focus. Yes, Janelle is with us till the end. I know. <laughs> we love you, Janelle. Thank you. So we get there and it's literally... Oh, something's happening behind us in Seattle. They see us rolling. Uh, the Space Needle is behind us, by the way. We're in Maybe. Seattle, Washington. Maybe they're doing music? No, it might be a truck. Actually, oh, this probably... truck has driven yeah. by before with like a oh that's speaker. what it is that's what it They're is like a party okay okay we're good anyway we're fine <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if you guys can hear it but it's popping it's sick all right. Go the road. So, all right so we meet we okay. drink we have a good time honestly everything's chill legit i promise you it was like the the best uh, reunion? Re reunion, I could ever think of. No like, hands ended up anywhere. No, like okay. we're just drinking in the hotel room. He's talking about guys he's dated. I'm talking about guys I've dated. I'm talking about Australia. Like we're just sharing our life basically for the past three years. And there's no flirtation. There's no, mm -hmm. it just felt like two friends that had finally come together after so many years. And we're like catching up and like, why did we wait so long for this? I love that. So... I will admit that we drank a lot. We went to the concert. From what I can remember, it was a great time. But, mm -hmm. I mean, we were, like, literally, like, front row, like, watching her lip sync and count her steps and everything. And, you know, I was probably blackout drunk. So, I don't remember much. Okay. Well, you don't remember a lot of things. You just have a bad memory. <laughs> but beyond... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, beyond that uh okay so everything's going fine he's not like trying to fill up on you no i mean okay. not from my recollection okay could be that's fair blackout drunk but from what i recall <laughs> that's literally fair. it was just two friends seeing britney spears lip sync and dance her life away and then it we went to like go tuesday <laughs> <laughs> then we went to go hang out with them. So the concert ended. Okay. Everything was fine. So this dancer that was interested in me, I think, um, brought us, you know, backstage with all the other dancers, basically to a, like a hotel party. Because the whole point was not only, hi, Doreen, you've missed the <gasps> whole story. <laughs> not only are you going to come see the concert, but you're going to come out, the whole point was to go out with them on New Year's Eve because, of course, two nobodies in Vegas are not going to get any anywhere. But if you're with uh, Britney Spears dancers, you're going to get it into the best clubs for New Year's Eve. So that okay. was the point. Got it. So he's like, come with us. We're going to have an after party really quick. It's going to be midnight, and then we're going to go. So we go to this after party. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm wasted because I don't even remember the end of the concert. So I was for sure. I was expecting this in yes. the story. I really was because I was like, I know one thing. Yeah. And he's well on his way now, but 
I know for sure at a Britney Spears concert, like, gone. Yeah. Wasted. Okay. Wasted, wasted, so, wasted. So, you, do you find the dancer or do you not find No, okay, so we, so we go to the backstage party, first of all. Um, Britney's there. She's like, hey, thanks for coming. No, just kidding. She's, like, probably asleep and, like, I don't know, tied up in her hotel room because she's a slave to performing. Britney Spears? Yeah. Oh, probably. Yeah. We don't see Britney. All, I all the... <laughs> I was like, I probably was in bed, but... <laughs> I probably was in bed tied up. <laughs> but, yeah, probably tied up, too. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Um, no, so we're at the party. Um, her dancers are there. I, I remember I was so drunk. I mean, it's just a very intimidating environment to be in. Like all of a sudden you're thrust into a hotel room of all the dancers that you saw on stage. Uh-huh. So there's the one dancer that's interested Tell in me. Tell me more. There's the other dancer that I know. He's very hot. Mm-hmm. And then there's like this other dancer. He's Brazilian. I'm not going to say names because if you guys really want to look, you can look them all up. Uh, it's legit. Anyway, there's a Brazilian dancer. He's yeah. very famous now. He's so handsome. I'm so drunk. I literally asked him like four times. I'm like, where are you from? He's and like, he's like, I'm from Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> he's like, I have answered this three. He literally Brazil. was like, I have answered this four times. They're probably like sick of me. So I am wasted at this point. The dancer that's interested in me is probably just like, wow, this guy's really annoying, but he's hot, so I'm gonna go with it. So we're all there in the after party. My ex is there, I don't know what he's doing. I'm hanging out with the dancer that invited us. Clock strikes midnight, as it does on New Year's Eve. I've heard of that. And then people kiss, right? So the dancer that's interested in me and I, we kiss. No harm, no fun. Or is it just like a spooch? I mean, can't like, remember. How it was probably legs? like a makeout. How, okay. Well, yeah, I've seen you blacked out. You're probably like, oh. Yeah, I was probably like, ah. Da, 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 da. I yeah. probably didn't care. I was like, whatever, it's midnight. I could be doing this in my armpit. Uh, oh, my God. So, <laughs> I didn't care. We made out. Next thing I know, okay. someone is screaming. Okay. And we're in a hotel room party. So, this is not only like all of the Britney Spears dancers. What hotel? But um, Planet, I think it was Planet Hollywood where they perform. Okay. Can't say for sure. I think okay. it was. Um, but it's not only all the Britney Spears dancers, it's their friends. And most of their friends also work in Vegas nightlife. So it's like all of Vegas nightlife is there. Okay. Okay. And it's midnight. Him and I make out. Everyone's kissing. Next thing I know, this dude is screaming at me. Screaming. The party goes silent. What the fuck are you doing? How can you do this to me? How can you do this in front of me? I'm like, what? And he's like, you're making out with this guy in front of me. Blah, blah, so disrespectful. And I'm like, what is the issue here? So then he calls his mom. I'm not kidding you. My ex is screaming at the top of his lungs, embarrassing me. You've done this? I've called my mom in a moment of... In a room full of strangers? I don't know. Crying? Maybe he's blacked out. Obviously he was blacked okay. out. Well, we're all blacked out. Okay, so imagine we're all blacked out at this point. Yeah, I'd probably call my mom because I'd be like, oh my God, my heart Okay, broke. well, he's calling his mom. Okay, he's screaming at me. He's crying. Meanwhile, this is only like 12.05. We're like literally... Kissing at midnight and ready to go out and party. Yeah. He causes a scene. The entire hotel room that this doesn't even very know embarrassing us. For you. Stops. Yes, it is <laughs> embarrassing. Because I'm trying to go out and have the best New Year's Eve of my yeah. life with Britney dancers and, and get into a club that I would never get into. And you have he's fucking it up. Yeah. So okay, so he's screaming, he's crying. Now, in retrospect. I would just be like, okay, crazy, Bye. move along. Bye. Can you just leave? Yeah. What did you do? So I'm like, uh, I don't want to say his name, uh, blah, blah, blah. What's happening? Why mm-hmm. are you going crazy? You knew the situation. What's going on? You're obviously very drunk. I don't, he is in a mess. He's screaming. He's crying. He's on the phone with his mom. He's like, I'm leaving. So he goes down the elevator and I'm like, Okay. So at this point, I had a decision, like, because we're sharing this hotel room. Oh, the important thing I forgot to mention was also I booked the hotel room and he owed me for half of it on Vegas in New Year's Eve, which is expensive. 
uh, and uh, I paid for it. Not to mention his ticket to Britney Spears was free. So he owed me about $300 for this hotel room, which I was like, yeah, just give it to me whenever. It was like a $600 hotel room. So he's like, I'm leaving. So I'm like, what does that mean? Because you still owe me some money for this hotel room. <laughs> so... He's like, hey, bye. I guess I'm out of this then? Yeah, I was like, no way. Because uh, not only did you get a free ticket to Britney Spears, but uh, I'm not going to pay for this hotel room by myself. But you got a, also a free ticket to me making out with another boy. <laughs> yeah. Pornhub.com. <laughs> uh, so... In retrospect, I would say my mistake was chasing this guy down. Okay. So I should have just let him leave. I think you should have too. But in that state, and but you being were being drunk, nice apparently. I think. Well, right? Because you chased after him. What happened? No, I chased after him because I was afraid of what was going to happen to the hotel room. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were being nice. I no. thought you were like, oh, this poor little guy. No, I don't know. Okay. Fuck. At this point, I'm over it. <laughs> Because I'm upset. Because literally, I mean, literally, yeah. I was crystal clear. <laughs> crystal. Yeah. I still have the message. I said, this dancer likes me. He's bringing us to VIP. We're going to go out with him after. We are just friends. Are you cool with that? He said, yes. So then he goes crazy. And I'm like, okay, what are you going to do to the hotel room that's under my name with my credit card? Because maybe you're going to be a psycho bitch and fucking break everything inside. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just an emotional psycho bitch. Well, if I knew that, I would have let him go. But he goes down the uh, yeah. escalator. And so all you can see is like, well, hey, he's So gonna... all I can see is him literally on the phone with his mom, crying, screaming, and like... Ticking a knife to Saying, close. fuck you, as he goes down the elevator. And I'm like, okay... Uh, he hasn't paid me the $300 and he might go damage the hotel room and mm -hmm. I'm going to be stuck with the bill. Okay. So I chase him. Okay. So I tell the dancer, I'm like, forget about me. I don't want to hold you guys up. Just go. I will try to message you if I can sort this out. In retrospect, I would have just gone with them because how epic of a night would that have been to just like go and party with Britney Spears dancers, probably gotten into clubs that I never would have gotten into yeah. in the first place in Vegas. But I didn't. I chased my stupid ex-boyfriend. Okay, so now here is where no it gets chase anybody. interesting. This is the lesson. <laughs> oh, we're chugging for this. We're you're supposed to fill it. Mental health moment. You're supposed to chug, chug the comment. You're supposed to fill the comment here as I chug. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, he leaves. I tell them, go. I start to chase him. The problem with Vegas is if you've ever been, you know that there is in one hotel, multiple towers, usually about yeah. four, mm -hmm. and they all have the same rooms, mm -hmm. but just different towers. Mm -hmm. So I go back to the wrong tower. I've been there once. <laughs> I just burp, sorry. Let me just fill that with my- That won't help. I don't know what to say when you're just guzzling. <laughs> don't know what to say. I'm like, Brittany. <laughs> Here. This and is listen your time. To, and listen to our ad about cooked champagne. <laughs> okay. So I go to chase him uh, and I go to the wrong tower. Actually, I think we were saying in Lux. No, Lux are. Is it because know, you're matter. blacked out or what? Uh, I mean, like how part of everything is because we were drinking, but okay. definitely because I was drunk. Um, I went to the wrong tower. I went to the right hotel, wrong tower, wrong room. So essentially, I didn't get in, right? So I'm trying with my key card. I'm like, this is my room, like 1208. Why doesn't it work? It's not working because I'm in the wrong tower. So I go down to security and I'm like, hi, I'm sorry. Uh, and this is, was my mistake. Uh oh. I used the term, I said, I, I just had a domestic dispute with my <gasps> boyfriend and I can't get into the room. I think he changed the key. So I didn't realize that was a very <laughs> serious term. <laughs> They're like, okay, so you were beat. But in my drunken state, I thought domestic dispute would be just a way to kind of expedite the process and get into the room. Oh my God. So they're like, okay, we're going to send security up with you. I was like, no, 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 it's not necessary. I just need to get into my room. And they're like, well, 
we're just going to send some officers up with you. And they're like, what's your room? So I'm like, okay, this is my room. And they're like, okay, it's in this tower. And in that moment, I'm like, shit, I, it's like tower one. And I was like, oh, I I'm was going to tower, tower two. And I was like, okay, thanks. And they're like, there's the guard. So I have to go with them. Oh my God. Okay. Can I interject here yes. with a domestic dispute was called on my home one time. <laughs> Okay, so wrong terminology for me to use. Um, and it was because me and my roommate, Janelle, if you're still watching, <laughs> this is you. Um, we were seeing NSYNC and Battery Boys and dancing around our apartment, super drunk, just flailing about. And like we were up on our countertops, just dancing and everything. And I went outside to pick up this boy <laughs> and bring him up to my apartment. And... Um, I see two cops and they're like going upstairs and we're like following behind them. And then we go into our apartment and they like are up there. And I thought they were going to a different apartment and they knock on our door and they're like, yeah, a domestic dispute was called on your apartment. We, who all resides here or whatever. Wait, was somebody inside? No, it was me and Janelle only. Oh. And, um, I'm sorry, me and my roommate. <laughs> And, um, I don't know if she's watching still, but, uh, I brought this boy into the apartment and then like two officers were like, okay, well, if nothing's happening in here, we need to see a roommate and make sure like nothing's happening. Like basically make sure that my roommate isn't beaten up and I'm not beaten up. Who called? I don't know. My neighbor. <laughs> So where was Janelle? She was in the apartment. We were just drunk, having a good time. Okay. So domestic dispute is a huge thing. Do okay, not so call on your neighbors. Do not use the terminology. Term <laughs> <laughs> terminology? Do not use the terminology. <laughs> I can't say this fucking word. Do not use the terminology domestic dispute. Is. Okay. Yeah. It's Unless you know for sure. Yeah. Unless well, you're... In my drunken state, I just thought that wouldn't... I, the thing was, I thought he had locked me out of the hotel room. Like, mm -hmm. I thought he went, changed the key, and was fucking up shit as I was trying to get to him. So mm -hmm. that's why I said, there's been a domestic dispute. I need to get into my room. Okay. You need to escort me. Well, you messed okay. up. Okay. So I messed up. Whatever. One of the security guards from Claire. from that front desk. Yes, I will admit that was okay. my fuck up. Okay. I mean, but let's not forget this whole thing was his fuck up. <laughs> okay. So he follows me. He comes with me. He escorts me to the right tower, the correct tower, <laughs> the correct room. And literally as we're walking up to the room, the door opens. My ex comes out with his bag. I'm there. There's three other police officers there because they were called in as additional support because I used the term <laughs> domestic dispute. So they're all standing there and you know how cops stand like with their fucking badge and they're walkie talking. They're standing like this. Yeah. Like, you know, like ready to take action. They're like, yeah. what's the problem here? He's coming out the door and he's like, what? And they're like, what's going on? And I was like, uh, he owes me money for this hotel room <laughs> and I need to make sure that nothing's fucked up. Yeah. So the police actually go into the hotel room. Okay. They check and they're like, everything seems fine. Do you think it's fine? I'm like, I think it's fine, but he still owes me this money. Now this is what is confusing to me because in other countries, um, I'm not going to get into this story, but I've been in similar situations. Oh my God. <laughs> and the police did not get involved. But okay. here they actually got involved. Okay. And I was like, he owes me half for this hotel room. If he wants to leave now, it's fine. But this was our deal. And so they basically said to him, like, you should transfer him the money and then we'll let you go. No problem. So he transfers. He has Chase. I have Bank of America. I don't know people that have Chase, what the deal is with chase but uh i don't like chase so he okay. shows the police officers he's like okay cool i'm gonna transfer him 300 dollars. he does the transfer they're like okay you go ahead because he had driven from la so oh, wow. i imagine well i don't know because he was so wasted i can't imagine he drove yeah. home well they were like go ahead Bye-bye. Good I luck. I know. Isn't that weird? You yeah. don't think they would be like oh let's breathalyze you no. like after i mean this i guess they don't know if he's driving or not but I mean, it's just so weird. He's like packing up his bags. He's like, I'm going to go back to LA. Fuck you. They're like, this is out of our hands. 
So they're like, go drive drunk. Go drive and the state trooper will take care of this. <laughs> That's what they think. They're exactly. like, Mm-mm. they're like, okay, Mm-mm. just wait till you get to the I-90. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Then we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So he leaves. He transfers me the money and he leaves. Okay. <laughs> to be the Scott more intense. It, it did get intense. That's why I had to lean out of frame. But <laughs> no, it's just a burp. Okay. Brittany got to interject. Did we meet Brady Spears during this story at all? That's my only question. And literally nothing has happened. We never met Brittany Spears. Oh damn it! All right. Actually, but I did meet Brittany Spears once with him, and okay. when we were together, okay. and it was because we went to her. Um, Comeback oh, performance oh, come on Good Morning America at the. I don't did know, you actually meet her Sarasota. there, or did you just no. hold a sign saying? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, this was when after she went. Um, I don't like to use the word crazy. She had her breakdown. Wait, and she year came was that? back. Two thousand seven. Two thousand. No, no. This was like two thousand thirteen. She came back with mm-hmm. Femme Fatale, and she did her first comeback. Performance mm-hmm. on Good Morning America, and she was like, "Good Morning America, I want you to watch me on GMA." Like her voice was so fucked up from like, oh my god, anti- you could tell her voice was so fucked up from okay. antidepressants. It's like, why are they making this woman work and free Britney for twenty twenty one? But this is like a whole different story, so I'm not gonna get into this. But we went to that concert together. Um, she was a mess. She was lip syncing. I don't even think they had a mic on her face or they had like an invisible mic. It was like so, she was so bad. It was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And that's why I was not excited to go to Vegas. But I went because of my ex and wanting to maintain a friendship with my ex. No, you wanted to go because you had a great opportunity to go to clubs with the dancer. Like, I mean, that was cool, but like, I honestly would have, if someone would have been like, here's 500 bucks, I would have like taken that. Oh. Yeah. I would have rather like sold the ticket. Okay. Because she wasn't like good yet. This was still when people were like, oh, is she going to be good? And okay. like, and going to Vegas was still very much like, oh, like, are you. Are we going to Vegas? Are you are we fucked doing up? This? Are you retired? Okay, gotcha. Like this was still, this was 2013. Like nobody was sure about Vegas. Now because Brittany went to Vegas and was successful, even though she never fucking sang the word live, everyone is going to Vegas now. So gotcha. it's successful. So okay. this was before all that. Everyone's like, oh, what's happening? Um, so it was a big risk. Gotcha. Yeah. So anyway. So where were we? <laughs> Where were we? We were off on our tangent. Yeah, just like, t- okay, save Brittany again. Yeah, free Brittany though for real. <laughs> okay, so what happened after? Okay, okay so, so, oh, so, he, so you checked the place. It was yeah, fine. so I checked the place. It was fine. The police made him transfer me the money in his little Chase account. Okay. He left. And then the police were like, is everything okay? She never sings live because uh, she's a horrible singer. She can't sing. She's a studio singer. This is going to be something I will cover in another episode. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Sh- it's not possible <laughs> for her to sing live. There's a lot going on with that. Mm-hmm. So he leaves. Don't know what happens. Don't know if he dies. Don't know if he drives. Don't know. Okay. Um, at this point, it's too late for me to even catch the Britney dancers because it's Mm. been like two hours at this point. So I'm like, fuck it. So I just go to bed. And that was literally... (gasps) Your New Year's Eve. My New Year's Eve. He leaves. Oh, the most important part. He leaves. The police are like, yeah, transfer the money. He's like, okay, transfer it. He leaves. Uh, Then I go to bed. I'm in bed. And it's like, transfer canceled. I didn't (gasps) know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that either. So I don't think you can with Venmo anymore. You can't with Venmo, but with it with back then it was, was just like a chase yeah. thing. So it was yeah. like he canceled it. Frick. So I never got the money, never heard from him. And the next day I called him and I'm mm-hmm. like, Are you joking me? Never answered. And I haven't heard from him. Actually, no, it's not true. I have well That's a whole oh, other podcast. It's a whole other it's podcast. A whole other podcast but ladies and gentlemen. In this story. Haven't heard from I never him heard from since. him. Because you technically hadn't. I you didn't. technically no. haven't in this entire time. Him reaching out to you, no. 
circumstances that we'll cover what in a different a dick. podcast. What a dick. So this is where I want to ask people that are listening, like, who do you side with? Because I have told this story to a couple people. No, no, he didn't go to jail. He's still alive. I've actually seen him, and we've had a huge... Uh, there's, there's... I wish he went to jail for a night. I wish he went to jail for a DUI. He would deserve that. Uh, he didn't. I think he slept in his car and then drove to LA. And... Um, <coughs> The next part of the story, Brittany's going to die. She's going to quit this I podcast. I going to die. Uh, the next part of the story is actually, what is it, five, six, seven years later, I've, I found him and I ran into him and we'll see what happens with that. Maybe that'll be part two. But in this story, he didn't care. I, he left. I never heard from him. And I just think that's really shitty because of three things. One, I was crystal clear about the situation. Mm -hmm. Two, he got the fucking Britney Spears ticket for free. And at this point, he was a bigger Britney Spears fan than me. Okay. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I've seen Britney in her prime. I don't need to see her like half-ass dancing and lip syncing in Vegas. Like, I'd rather sell that ticket. Mm -hmm. But I went because I wanted to reestablish our friendship. And I was doing that for him. Mm -hmm. So he fucked me over and then he fucked me over from, hello, you're Thank not you. supposed to be, you're not supposed to pay attention to the Instagram I know, live. but here we Bernie's, are. Bernie's uh, distracted because someone, <laughs> Bernie's distracting someone saying, you have great skin. And I do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Three. So that was it. Okay. Well, I get it. I mean, I, I do side with you in some ways and I do get the wrong that he did, but I do like, I don't say I side with him. I just feel for him on some what? thing. What? Level. There's no, it doesn't uh, make sense to me. Does anybody else like, please. If you're message. listening, please comment or message in because it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense because it's not like this is six months or one year after we broke up. This was literally three to four years after we had broken up. I know, but and if you, if you I was have, crystal clear. Okay, if you still have those feelings, I don't care who's crystal clear about whatever, like you still have those feelings and you still get hurt. That's fine. That's fine. If you, okay, you could be the biggest shit show of your life when you're drunk, but the next day, if you say, hey, I'm really sorry, I was wasted, I, whatever, you take advantage of or you, okay, you take you accountability. No, no, him, me. Why do I need to say that? I don't need to say that. Message, uh, like I feel like the next day I should have been messaged like, okay, what happened last night? Like, no. why did you react that way? No, I tried. But he didn't say anything. Well, I don't even know what I would have said the next yeah. day. He should, if he would have said no, to I me, know, I get that. The next day, I'm really sorry. I was drunk. I don't even know what what happened. Yeah. I would have been like, cool. I, I, I don't care what mayhem you cause. I, I don't care if you fucking upend the entire earth. If you I mean, just, he, the next day you say, okay, you know what? I'm sorry I was really drunk and I take accountability for that. I'm really sorry. But he didn't do that. He ignored me. But he could have And been, to this like, day, I he doesn't expect, apologize. <laughs> I didn't expect to feel that way about him kissing somebody in right, the night. Right. And so he was shocked himself. And so then he had too much anxiety and too much right. like I did not expect this. And like he ignores it. Maybe that's his solution. Right. But then as thing. an adult, you say everything you just said and you said, I'm sorry. Absolutely. In my drunken I state, I, I didn't expect all of those emotions and they came up and I reacted that way and I'm sorry. And that's the bottom line. But he never did that. Yeah. Not only did he never apologize, he fucked me over like three hundred dollars. I know. And he fucked me over. I don't really care about the money, but the experience, which is what I'm mad at myself about, because mm -hmm. instead of just saying "fuck you," I'm gonna enjoy my experience here. Yeah. I chased him to try and fix the situation right, right, right. when I should have just said, "You're crazy." I'm gonna enjoy myself. I'm gonna enjoy my company and forget about you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes me really upset. I know, yeah. We're just reading the Instagram live comments. 
Yeah, I know. Exactly. It. I mean, it is. He put himself in, that own, in his own situation, and I get that. But I'm not saying I side with him. I just understand his hurt. I don't think that he dealt with it well. Well, it's just also embarrassing because this is like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I mean, first of all, to be surrounded by this many... Like Britney dancers and performers in yeah. Vegas is like I want to take a advantage. huge thing. So, yeah. it's, so even that in and of itself was embarrassing because he literally. I'm not. I'm, this wasn't like a private meltdown. This was like a meltdown in front of literally the entire hotel suite party. Everybody stopped and was That's looking awkward. at him, and he was like crying, calling his mom, screaming at me, like even. An ex of one of the dancers that I know to this day remembers this story oh and God. I didn't even know him at the time. And he's like, oh yeah, I remember that thing in Vegas and you guys were like screaming at each other. And I was like, oh God, like what? I don't even want to be associated with my ex. I was just doing this as a nice thing. And now this is like how I'm remembered. It's yeah. like so embarrassing. Yeah. Like really, like honestly, like I, I would have rather just either sold the tickets or gone by myself. Yeah. Like the whole point that makes me mad is... I literally gave everything to have him not only see his favorite performer, mm -hmm. but to reestablish a friendship with very clear boundaries. Clear boundaries is key, but it didn't happen. So would you imagine that even four, five, six, how many years has it been? Seven, Seven. years later, he has no remorse and coincidentally not even coincidentally like fucking i mean kind of. from a cosmic i don't even yeah, know how way it happens beyond. yeah he actually <laughs> i don't even know how to say this he is this um, a different podcast i don't know you know it's gonna be a different podcast but he basically um moved states uh became a boy band impersonator performer and they actually do quite well and coincidentally once I started working for Emirates, I started traveling a couple times to the U.S. because we had a few um, destinations in the U.S. I happened to have a destination to Florida, and he happened to be performing in Florida literally at the same time. Like, what are the chances of those cosmos coming together? So would you believe that when I saw him for the first time after all these years, he was sorry or no? <gasps> Messages. What do you think happened? What do you think happened? And this happened how long ago? Well, the first time I saw him after all these years would have been in November of 2019. Okay. So. So what do you think happened last year ish? <laughs> um. With did he apologize? Did, did he, he apologize? Angry? Did he remember? Messages. Did he pay also, me back? I would love to hear crazy stories because. Obviously, I'm easily enthralled. <laughs> so we want to know your worst New Year's Eve stories. Thank you for listening to my worst New Year's Eve story. And I wish you all a better New Year's Eve than that. Than that. But okay, I think we're all okay. just kind of uh, surviving. Cruising. So. Still cruising. <laughs> <laughs> Comment New your Year. worst New Year's Eve stories. Thank you for listening. And we are going to do part two with what happened uh, with this crazy ex sometime later in the future. Once we sort out what we're doing here. <laughs> so we got too much going on. We have like a vlogging camera <laughs> and like a ring light. And, and like, like bottles an Instagram of live. And Who knows? And thanks for watching, guys. We just wanted to do this for fun. But um, yeah. We really appreciate those of you that that uh, gave us Message the support. And listen. So um, we'll see if we get this going to the new year. And thank you, Brittany. I love you. Love you guys. Love you even love more. You. Okay. Happy New Year. Flex around the world. Flex around the world. Also, yeah, flex isn't just about fitness, guys. It's about flexing like your life, your passions. My body your, and soul. Yeah, it's like flexing. Like flex your life. So flex around the world. I'm gonna try to flex my tits right now. I can't do it. <laughs>